What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of my CD collection. I know it's been a couple of months, but I've just kept a couple of new CDs, and so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is Kanye West Graduation, released in 2007 on Rockefeller on the Def Jam Records. This is actually his third studio album. Um, very, very dope album. This is when Kanye was at his prime, in my opinion. I mean, really at his prime. Um, singles I was known for are um, um yeah I got fucking fucking digipack I hate these shits yeah um the he came out with I believe um can't tell me nothing stronger good life featuring T Pain flashing lights and I believe homecoming too. Other than that, this is a very, very, very dope album, you know. Um, I, I'm going to give you like a little history. Believe it or not, this is actually like the first hip-hop album I actually copped. Like, first hip-hop album I got for my birthday because I remember I was like um, 12 years old. Back in like 07. And like Kanye's graduation, like, I, I remember this shit, like, right, see. Kanye West and 50 Cent were both going to drop the albums the same day. It was like a huge event for hip-hop at the time. Like, because I, I believe 50 was about to drop um, that Curtis album. And, you know, believe it, no surprise that this album kind of sold more than Curtis, and it was actually better than Curtis. But like, I remember the whole hype around this album. I remember everyone trying to cop this album mm -hmm. around this time, around like that same day. Luckily, I got it for a birthday about like two months later and like you know this is like the first hip hop album I actually got you know and that's why it holds a special place in my heart and like I love the sound of this album too cause this album has more like a stadium experimental stadium sound like I read that Kanye was influenced by U2 especially in his life U2 when they do the live performances so very very dope album I'll definitely be doing a review on this album. In my opinion, this is like really like probably his last classic album. Cause when he came out with 808s and Heartbreak, that was an okay album, but I wasn't really a fan of a lot of songs there. Cause like I know he was going through some shit with his mom dying, and that's what represented the album. But there was some songs like this. That was like the beginning of Kanye's. How how to put it, like his overly power, so. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy. I actually did like. I like that album, but at the same time, I dislike it because I feel like it's overrated. Yeah, people call it like the. It is like people call it like, the greatest rap album of all time. I did like um, I did like the Watch the Throne album it came out with Jay Z. I did like that, and I. And I hate, I fucking hate Yeezus. I might do a video like talking about his his later part of his discography. Next album is this shit right here. Um, damn. Mob Deeps, The Infamous, released in 1995. I believe this was released on Loud, with Loud Records. You know, I, I can't believe it took me this long just to get this album. This is hands down like a milestone in hip hop, East Coast hip hop, you know, very groundbreaking album. Very influential album, you no. Know, a lot of New York cats were like trying to copy Havoc's like production style with this joint, like a lot of cats were like quoting Prodigy, like Quoting Prodigy lyrics from like this album, like this is a very, very, very influential album. Like, especially when it comes to Queensbridge hip hop. Like, if you like Queensbridge hip hop but you don't like this album, there's something seriously wrong with you. You know, singles I was known for are Shook Ones Part Two, Survival of the Fittest, Temperatures Rising. Love that song. And um, Give Up the Goods featured Big Noid. Which, um, that song Give Up the Goods, um, 
that song actually really brought big, big Noid more exposure. Like his verse on that joint, whew, like still to this day one of my favorite Big Noid appearances on the Mob Deep song. Like this, they only took like a 360 turn after they dropped on um, Juvenile Hell. Cause like that whole Juvenile, I do I love Juvenile Hell. That's a dope album. At the same time, it was like they didn't, they didn't really find their sound like that, you know. Like they were still teens. I mean, they were, I think they were still like they were like in their twenties when they dropped this album. I believe they were in the twenties. And like Prodigy, back in the nineties, Prodigy was like a lyrical monster. Like one thing I loved about Mob Deep, like as why well, Prodigy, he would always used to. Have his like street slang, but he would make it sound like lyrically dope. Like, you never really had an MC that really did it the way Prodigy was doing it back in that time. And Havoc's production on this album, although like Q Tip produced one joint, I believe he produced one joint on it. Like, the way well, he has like eerie piano loops and like those hard hit drums, you know, very, very dope album, you know. I kind of, but at the same time, Hell on Earth is my favorite album from them. But if you're a fan of mid '90s hip hop or hip hop in general, cop this album. Stevie Stevie Wonder's um songs in the key of life, released in 1976 under Timber and Motown Records. Classic album right here. Although it does get a bit old praise at times, you. You know this what you're in for. I believe this is actually his um I think his twentieth I don't, he he dropped so many albums but yeah I believe it was his twentieth album. Like this was highly acclaimed, highly anticipated album. I'm gonna give you a little trivia before I discuss the singles. Um He wasn't even supposed to drop this album. Because I believe after he dropped on um, the full fullness first finale, he wanted to quit the music business because and he wanted um, to help kids in Africa. Yeah, help kids in Africa, like especially in Ghana. And he was serious about that, but I believe he, Motown, he gave him, gave him a new contract. He negotiated the contract, you know. And, you know, this album was very. Very, this is, this is a very, very, very good album. Like, it has a mixture of, like, um, funky, funky side, mixing with the soul, mixing with the atmospheric kind of music, you know. Singles I was known for are Sir Duke, I Wish, um, I believe, Knocks Me Off, no, wait, not Knocks Me Off, Isn't She Lovely? That wasn't a single, but like it got heavily radio airplay. Um, and I believe as as was a single too. Yeah, this album like, of course, the album like won tons of awards. A lot of people say this is his best album. Although I love this album with a passion, I think like Talking Book, this is my favorite album for him. Cause like that album was just ooh, that album was just dope. But like, if if this is a good album for anybody, just if you wonder what Stevie Wonder's music is like, this is a good album to start with. This is Stevie Wonder songs "The Key of Life," nineteen seventy six. This is actually on the two thousand reissue. Wait, is it? Yeah, the two thousand reissue. Then we got Jackson Five, or in this case, the Jacksons, self titled, CBS Records debut. Released in 1976. Um, this is this is another good album right here. I kind of feel like this album kind of gets slipped on a bit. Like this is like the first album they did without um Jermaine. Excuse me. Quick. Yeah. This is the first album they did without Jermaine Jackson. And like, cause you know Jermaine, um, I believe he was married to um, Barry Gordy's 
daughter at the time, and he didn't want to like jump as a relationship, something like that. And um, this is actually a very good album. This is actually one of my favorite albums from them. Like my favorite albums from them gotta be like the maybe maybe tomorrow, this album, Destiny, and um, what's that one? The Diana Ross presents the Jackson Five. You know, I can't. But this album stands out to me because Gamble and Huff. You guys might know because they produce a lot of joints from like the OJ's, Teddy Pendergrass. Um, they, cause you know they're from Philadelphia, and the Jacksons had like it had like this album had like a Philadelphia Philadelphia soul kind of sound to it, and I kind of felt that was a good mix, especially for like MJ's vocals, you know. I believe this album came out with two singles, "Enjoy Yourself" and um, "Show You the Way to, to Go." Yeah, but one song in particular that's my favorite song is on um, track number three. Good times. Who that song is just nice as fuck. This is the Night Night Very Dope album. I re recommend anybody check this album out. I know a lot of people kind of like biased about like the Jacks the Jacksons after um they left Motown. I know a lot of people are biased about that. But I kind of feel like they got better. Oh, another thing too. This is actually the first album they actually wrote their own material for. I forgot to mention that. So. Yeah, but like the Jacksons 1976 album, Must Talk. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do two more. I, I might do um two more albums. Hold on. Yeah. Next album. Next album is um, Run DMC's Back From Hell album, released in 1990 on Profile Records. Um, I've heard a little bit of this album. I actually got this. This is part of my um, the Run DMC set I got about, I think it was about two years ago, I believe so. Yeah. I, feel like I haven't really heard this album in a full, but this album... Um, it's kind of eh, in my opinion, because around 1990, this style was kind of, like, played out. Like, although, like, they still had a following. Like, you gotta admit, 1990 was, like, the years, like, of the Ice Cubes, Public Enemies. Um, what, what, who else? Who else? Was, like, the Native Tongues were coming out at that time. You know, Gangster Rap was at a peak around the time too so like it was very very Run DMC was like caught like they were like swept under the rug at that time and it was kinda like they were trying to find like a new sound yeah singles I was known for are doesn't even say the track listing in the back so but um it came out with really two singles um What's it all about? Wait, it didn't come out with two singles. So um, what else? Ghostbusters, Pause, and um, Face Faces, and they went for that New Jack Swing kind of sound because that was like the popular thing back in like New Jack Swing. And you know, this um, I have to listen to this album in full. If I do, I'm gonna definitely do a review on this. It it took them like three more years when they came up down with the King. They was kind of brought them back, for, and you know, but I I'm gonna listen to this album in the four, and I'll see like I'll tell y'all if I re recommend it or not. One DMC back from her. The last album is um this one. It's Nas I Am, released in 1999 on Columbia Records. Um, yes, this album was released. Yes, he dropped two albums. But well, I'm gonna get into that in a minute. Um, singles I was known for are "Hate Me Now" featuring Puff Daddy, and um, what's the other one? Nas is like, yeah, this album was like, oh my god, 
when this album first came out, it was it got like mixed reviews because I believe like this was like the time when Nas got that dude um Steve that Steve Stute guy and you know he kind of like changed Nas image like other like he wanted him to do more commercial songs although he like he started doing more more commercial songs with like the it was written. Wait, actually, scratch that. I believe Steve Stute was his manager. I think they got together back in 1996, yeah. Like, although it was written was, like, more more commercial a little bit, it still had that street sense to it. But I'm not saying this is a bad album, though. Hell no. This album actually has some really dope songs, but, like, I believe, like, this is, like, his most slept-on record because... I'm going to give you a little, little trivia. He was actually supposed to release a double disc album called I Am, I think I Am Nostradamus. And so, do, around that time, MP3s were coming out around that time. And so, Nas had to like scrap some songs up. And most of the songs that were supposed to be on this album appeared on the last tapes album. And a few, I think a, a few songs came out in the Nostradamus. The Nostradamus album, he wasn't. He didn't even want to do that album. He didn't want to release those songs because he felt that it was kind of whack, though. But I believe that the label wanted him to do it because of the bootlegging. And so, y'all know stuff about the Nostradamus. I'm definitely going to do a review of that album. And the thing about, like, this album... Oh, what else? What, what, what was I about to say? The thing about the Nostradamus song was, like, a lot of people thought he was, like, going commercial they thought he was losing his mind at that time and that album was like these that's that's why like i kind of feel like this album kind of gets overshadowed due to nostradamus but this album really has some really nice songs like one of my favorite songs off this album is of course new york cinema part two favorite four favorite features scarface yeah one of scarface illest guest appearances so, and the song like We Will Survive that song We Will Survive was actually a tribute to Tupac and Biggie and believe it or not Nas actually criticized Jay Z on that song too cause like Jay was calling himself the king of New York around that time and he felt like Nas was like Nas felt like Jay was just trying to copy his style copy J Biggie's style and another thing too you see this cover right here very nice like Egyptian kind of cover Nas almost died I think because the clay got stuck in his nose and he couldn't breathe and he was like almost suffocate so he almost died during um the photo shoot other than that this is a very dope album I'm definitely gonna do a review on these I'm not gonna do a review on these all these albums but like I feel like this album could be a little bit more better and like the whole bootlegging thing with the MP3s, um, Mob Deep when they did murder music, they faced the same problems too. So there you have it. This is Nas with the I Am feet in these nights ninety nine. Um, and I'm gonna stop there today. You know, thank you guys for watching um the CD collection. Hope to catch see some more events later. Peace.